This year marks the 25th year anniversary of the Srebrenica genocide. I sought to learn more about the genocide that killed 8,372 Bosnian Muslims in a matter of five days, and has left over 8,000 Bosnian Muslims missing till this day. I reached out to community members to learn more about this tragic event that changed the lives of Bosnians forever. Hi, my name is Jamila Mojic. I was born in Sarajevo, um, but my parents are from Srebrenica and Bratunac, but I've grown up in the U.S. for most of my life. I am the co-founder and president of Benefit for BIH, and currently I'm also a student. I'm studying political science, um, and I want to get my master's degree eventually one day in public policy and administration so that I can either be a lobbyist or a public policy analyst. I've probably been speaking about the Bosnian Muslim genocide to other people almost my entire life just because my parents always made sure that I knew about it as I will do with my kids in the future and I've always thought that it was important to talk about. Um, I decided to speak about it just because I see how the genocide has traumatized so many people and the oppression that my people continue to face every day is honestly, frankly, disgusting to me. I think it's important to talk about the Bosnian genocide and the war so that history doesn't repeat itself. We can definitely learn a lot from studying what happened in Bosnia in terms of how to prevent another atrocity from happening and how we can stop a potential genocide by seeing the signs of what leads to a genocide or what has led to a genocide before. Also, the victims definitely have to get justice, as does the entire country, and the first step to take to do that is to recognize what happened in Bosnia. So much of what Bosnia has experienced today has been shaped by the genocide and the war, and we can't let people deny this genocide at all. So speaking up about it is the first step to recovery. My name is Susanna Vukic. I'm a managing board member of the Institute for Research of Genocide Canada. This Canadian-based institute does scholarly scientific research on genocide with a specific focus on the Bosnian genocide. I am currently in the final stages of writing my book based on my experience of writing about the Bosnian war and genocide, my trip to Bosnia, and everything that I have learned since then. What led to Srebrenica? An international armed aggression involving the republics of Serbia, Montenegro, as well as Croatia. The goal of each aggressor was to grab as much territory as possible and to have it be ethnically cleansed of individuals not of one's own ethnic group. For a number of reasons, Bosnia's Muslims, the Bosniaks, were the most vulnerable of all its people. They faced annihilation as a group during this entire period. So the Srebrenica genocide and the war in Bosnia itself can largely be attributed to Serbian ultranationalism. So after the split of Yugoslavia, Serbia essentially wanted to have a bigger country for itself that would have been called Greater Serbia. And so um, Serbia aspired to at least get the eastern part of Bosnia by ruling Srebrenica, which is very close to the Bosnian-Serbian border, so it was easily accessible to them, and they wanted to ethnically cleanse the region. Doing so would allow Serbians to move into the region and basically take control of the area, um, so then it would have been easier for them to make the eastern part of Bosnia a part of Greater Serbia. What is the Srebrenica genocide? So the Srebrenica genocide was the brutal torture, raping, and murder of over 8,372 Bosnian men, women, and children. There was a bigger focus on killing males so that they wouldn't be able to pass down Bosnian last names. Um, that way, Bosnians would essentially cease to exist. Um, trenches were dug to hide the bodies so that Bosnians would be wiped out and so that there wouldn't be any evidence against Serbians. Serbians also mutilated the bodies and put different parts of the different bodies in different trenches um, so that it would be difficult to identify the bodies. Again, that speaks to their attempt to try to hide any evidence. And the Srebrenica genocide is the worst massacre in Europe since the Holocaust. This event has been recognized as a genocide by the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, as well as the International Criminal Court. It is important to remember that during the war, genocide did not occur only in Srebrenica. It occurred throughout the nation, in all of its towns and cities from the very beginning of the war in April 1992. Why did they target Muslims? 
So Serbians targeting Muslims can be traced back to the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire ruled over Serbian land for over 500 years, just as they ruled over other land as well for that time period. Serbians have always said because Bosnians are Muslims or because the majority of Bosnians are Muslims that they are essentially Turks. So Serbians wanted to get revenge for the Ottoman Empire controlling their land by attacking and getting rid of Muslims. There was also a false narrative spread by the Serbian government that Bosnian Muslims would eventually end up attacking Serbia, which was completely false. There was no evidence of that whatsoever. So Muslims were kind of used as a scapegoat there. The Balkans also have a big problem with religious separation. They interchange religion and nationality a lot. So for example, um, Serbians aren't really that fond of Bosnian Muslims, but if you're a Bosnian Christian, they'll like you better because you're considered to be one of them as Serbia is a majority Christian country. How has it affected yourself and your family? My mom is from Srebrenica, um, so a lot of her family was killed in the Srebrenica genocide. I do have a grandfather and three brothers that I never got to meet um, because they did pass away during the war and the genocide, um, not to mention countless uncles, aunts, cousins, just other family members that I never got to meet because they did die in the war. My dad was in a concentration camp where he was severely tortured um, and then after he got out of the concentration camp, he couldn't speak or hear for um, a few months. Um, my parents and other family members do still have PTSD and other mental illnesses and just general health issues that they have to deal with today as a result of the war. Um, and my parents got to see their own parents maybe four times in the span of 17 years just because we did have to move out of the country. For me personally, I didn't get to grow up in my home country, which has really made me struggle with my identity growing up. But on the other hand, it has also made me who I am today. It's made me really passionate about politics and just fighting for justice in general. What is the Dayton Agreement and what happened after the war? So the Dayton Agreement is an agreement created by the United States to stop the war in Bosnia. However, it was created right after Bosnia started gaining ground um, against Serbia and we started taking our country um, back. Um, it was assigned by both Bosnia and Serbia. A big problem of the Dayton Agreement um, is that it states that Bosnia and Herzegovina has to have three presidents. So one has to be Bosnian, one has to be Croatian, and one has to be Serbian. And those presidents rotate every six months. So for six months, like one president is in charge, the next six months, another one of them is in charge and so on. Um, because of this, nothing gets done. The country is more and more corrupt every single day. And this forces Bosnians to still be ruled by their oppressors. Another big problem of it is that it forced Bosnia to name the eastern part of the country the Republic of Serbia. Even though that territory is still owned by Bosnia, it still carries that name of Serbia. And after the war, many Bosnians immigrated to different countries and had to start new lives. There was and still is a lot of tension in the country and I mean nothing went back to normal after the war. Bosnians were and continue to be persecuted in their own country. And today we fight against genocide denial and strive to get justice for our country. There are parts of Bosnia, especially in Eastern Bosnia, where Serbians are the political officials and won't allow Bosnians to attend school or be the teachers there. In these Bosnian areas, students are being taught that Serbia didn't um, start the war and that there was absolutely no genocide, which has been proven false time and time again. Students in Serbia are, all, are also being taught the same. Um, there are Serbian news outlets that try to spread propaganda. So recently there was an instance where one of these news outlets tried spreading a story where a Serbian student in Chicago got the school district um, to change the social studies curriculum to say that there was no genocide. So I ended up contacting the school to let them know like that's not acceptable. But they said that the story is false and that the Bosnian genocide is and will continue to be in the curriculum. Um, but the news outlet was basically printing a story saying that this student successfully did it and like they were giving instructions on how to tell your school district to change what they're teaching and like make it so that they're teaching um, that Serbia did nothing which is completely ridiculous and untrue. How has it affected the broader Bosnian community in the past and today? As a result of the war and its aftermath, 
Bosnia remains in a precarious position today. A lot of Bosnians who survived the war can't bring themselves to talk about it and some people who moved out of the country can't even bring themselves to visit Bosnia ever again just because they don't want to relive that trauma so they don't get to see their family members or old friends or where they grew up. I mean they've completely had to change their entire lifestyles. It's also definitely shaped the politics in the country and heightened tensions in the Balkan region. It's certainly broken families. I mean, many people suffered such great loss and others had to move and uproot their entire lives. A lot of people are also forced into poverty because it's difficult to find work in Bosnia for those who stayed in the country and um, for those who had to move out of the country. Just moving to a new country with literally no money and no supplies already puts you in debt. So it's definitely hard to start a new life anywhere after the war. Where do we go from here? The biggest thing that we can do is to spread the correct information and to stop the spread of misinformation and disinformation. In my experience, I found that many people are Islamophobic because they hear or see things in the media or from other people that they know about Islam that are false. And a majority of these people don't even bother to look up whether or not the information that they received is correct. So I think that we have to make sure that the correct information is readily available and easy to find. From a political standpoint, I think it's vital that governments pass laws to show that they are against hatred and Islamophobia and that it won't be tolerated. So that way, even if people may have a certain hatred in themselves, they won't be able to spread that by publicly showing it. And I think that we as citizens have to put pressure on governments to condemn Islamophobic actions, especially with the current situation in China where Muslims are being forced into concentration camps. Most politicians only have jobs because the citizens vote for them to have jobs so that at the end of the day, they will listen to us and we do have the power to change things through our votes and through our voices. We do have to amplify the voices of Muslims and give room to Muslims so that they have the capacity to speak out against the hatred and so that they can speak about the religion and give that correct information. We can sign petitions and contact US politicians so that they can amend the Dayton Agreement so that Bosnia can have one Bosnian president and to rename the Republic of Serbia. I think we can also push for Bosnia and other countries to have national laws that are against genocide denial. So genocide denial can be deemed as hate speech. And similarly, we can push governments to make the mockery of genocide illegal. Um, in terms of Bosnia, I know that there are many Serbian songs that mock the Srebrenica genocide, and these songs are played in public settings in Serbia, especially in um, soccer games. And also supporting Bosnian nonprofits and researchers greatly helps. So the summer of last year, I did create a nonprofit called Benefit for BIH, where we work to restabilize the lives of Bosnians and Herzegovinians in Bosnia by funding new and old businesses, schools, and organizations. Right now, we are working on a project to rebuild a gym for an, el an elementary school in Cherska. Um, the gym they currently have was used by Bosnians to hide during the war, so it's really not in the best shape or safe to use right now. So yeah, that's what we're working on right now. The biggest thing that we can do is to basically just speak against the genocide and teach future generations about what happened. In my opinion, silence belittles the pain and trauma of victims and survivors, and silence is choosing the side of the aggressor.